your guitar people and this time people that uh, are buying, you know, on a smaller budget. I often show very high-end guitars because it's fun and very few of us get to play them or even hear them. Well, this you can play, you can hear, you can own because this Hackstrom Ultra, Ultra Max um, is actually affordable. It clocks in at 639 euro. Now for that, you don't get a gig back, you don't get a case, and you know what, at 639 euro, I'm not gonna bitch about it. So I saw this at NAMM, and I was very intrigued. So let's go through a couple of stats of this uh, baby. It's a guitar, it has one of these cuts, no cut up here, that's because it's, you know, lower budget, they can only do one cut, the second cut would be considerably more. Um, I love the finish. I absolutely love this satin uh, top in this bluish green, greenish blue, greenish blue. It's blue with a little bit of green in it. They're calling it Fall Sky. That's what they call I have, I have a cheat sheet. Uh, they're calling it Fall Sky. And uh, it says the top is a flame maple. I'm gonna go flame maple veneer. For 639, you're not gonna get a solid top. Let's not kid ourselves. Uh, it's a mahogany body, it's a mahogany neck, a slim D neck, whatever that means. This, this is how big that is. It's a rather thin neck, it's definitely not a chunky neck. And look at this perloid binding, which is actually on the angled headstock and on the whole guitar, which is nice. I'm not a fan of binding usually, but that's neat. And, um, and on the edge, you can see that it's like a three-ply thing. Very nice. We have this very unique, which is Hackstrom. We have the Hackstrom bridge here, which is a stop tail thing, but the back is uh, with the metal. And then it's actually on a piece of plexiglass, whose function I don't understand. Um, and the... Holes in there are st uh, the ball end holder thingies are actually staggered. Let's see if this gets, this camera. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Can you see that it's staggered in there? There you go. So two levels of ball end holder thingies. We have pickups which are proprietary two custom sixty El Nico five humbuckers made for them uh, with beautiful silver things and. Uh, kind of custom-y um, pickup rings. It's not a standard pickup ring. This pickup ring is all the way to the uh, body and then just has a like, like a little um, sleeve. We have these big-ass Hackstrom knobs. It's all taste. For me, they'd be too big. I would put dome heads on there, look a little bit more modern. But we, Hackstrom is a very kind of a 60s classic look. So, you know, I don't know, if I put domains on there, it might not work with the headstock, so I, know I would leave those on there. But also, the uh, tip switch, the switch tip is not rounded off, but kind of very sharp looking. So it's a, it's a, it's a choice, you know? So we have volume for the bridge, we have volume for the neck. Um, nothing you can push-pull. We have a global tone, and that you can push-pull for a coil split, not a coil tap. Colin Scott has a video about that. It really bugs him when people do it wrong, so I'm going to say this right. It's a coil split. It's only using half of the humbucker. It's not tapping it at a different level of windings. Um, we have a Graftec Tusk. Is that correct, Henning? Graftec Tusk Black XL. Yes. Hey, Justin from Graftec. Um, and then we have, well, the tuners just say Hackstrom, and it says here, Hackstrom Design Tuners. They have these uh, stair-steppy kind of, um, the stair-steppy kind of design, like the Angelico has on everything, uh, which again is a classic kind of design. It, it kind of flows nicely with this little bit bigger headstock. I'm, I call it 50s, 60s design, even though this is, is, is ultra max, this is like a modern guitar, with a more classic headstock. They are not locking, uh, which I can forgive in that price range. They're not locking, they're not staggered, we're talking 639, okay? 
uh, we have block inlays, and what I like about them is that they're rounded off. They're not actually all square. They have a little bit of a roundness to them, which is nice. And the fretboard is Resonator. Don't ask me what that is, but that's what that is. So we've covered everything. Uh, back is satin. There's no super access contour heel bullshit because it usually it's just for looks and doesn't really do anything. You can easily get into the higher ranges. It feels super nice, this kind of satin back. It kind of feels like an unpainted neck. You have a wooden feel to it somehow. Uh, so far, I've used this quite a bit in the last few days. The one thing I would bitch about... Oh, I like the really tiny dots. Are they centered? Kind of, yeah. yeah. Um, the one thing I miss is a teta de guitarra, a guitar tip, because it is an angled headstock and it is a rather thin neck, which means right here we have to, the typical Gibson let's break the headstock off situation and there is no extra wood here. Would be nice if that had a little bit of a bump just to make me feel better. So we'll hear it. Starting in the neck position, it's tuned to. Right now we're going into the, wait, did I have everything? Oh, it's a 25.5 inch scale. So it's longer for the Le Down Tune people. Now it's longer scale, it's not a Gibson. Um, 43 millimeters here, instead of 42. Uh, we get everything, yes. So moving on. Um, I'm going into the Synergy Syn50 head on the BB module, from the BBBE module, which simply is just a fendery kind of, um, well, fender sound. It's a clean. Into the aux and also into the cab, attenuated with the, what's it called? Um, oh, the Tone King attenuator right there, because otherwise it's way too loud and I've kind of wrecked my ears a bit. Um, and you're hearing both of them mixed together. For humbucker sound that has quite a bit of brightness to it, which is nice. If I want to add to that, I'll just go uh, chord split. Doesn't lose a lot of bass, but get some clarity. So put some delay on that and some chorus here. bit thin on the bridge. I don't know. Ah. Ah, much more thick than the hamburger. So, definitely variety of sounds. It's not a one-trick pony, which I like. In terms of setup, playability, um, everything right out of the box, it's a good guitar. Take it out of the box, go to the rehearsal, stretch all the strings and woohoo! Uh, it's just good. In the price range. Actually, 639 is... This could be two, three hundred more and I still wouldn't bitch about it. So... That's nice. I 
like a lot. Middle position. The thing is, it's not, the, the sounds are not mahogany sounds. They're not Les Paul sounds. They are rounder sounds. I don't feel that ploppy, attacky, which sometimes you want and sometimes you don't, from a, um, from a Les Paul, which is cool, because that makes it a hackstrom. Okay? Just a nice round sound, but I think more brightness than the typical mahogany guitar, which I like. Here's it into a dumbly kind of an amp uh, from the OS module on the Synergy. Much thicker. Nice, but of course you want to hear drive sounds. Uh, so we're going to go to the JCM 800. Put the gain all the way up. Go to the Morgan AC20. It's a boxy kind of a thing. That's a beautiful combination. Um, we're gonna go into, let's see, what else do I have? The Houston Kettner Black Spirit, which is very likely a good pairing in terms of price point. The amp is $7.99, the guitar is $6.39, so that's probably more in the price range of the potential customer. It's right there behind the Hackstrom Alva. The blue thing, it's a Houston Kettner, why am I even telling you this? <laughs> That's on the crunch channel of the Blacksbury 200. <laughs> job. Uh, moving on to the Jet City Emilia. Again, an amp in the price range of the potential buyer of the guitar. It's right there. Oh, it's right there.
that works really well. So I want to play classic rock, I mean punk, this with that amp, I'm not making any compromises. <laughs> dynamic All like of course we'll, we'll, we'll move on um what else do we have oh the marshall mini plexi again 999 for an amp right there if you want to go classic rock that's roughly in the price range of the potential buy of this guitar <laughs> Um, let's see how modern can it get. Rev 100P. Hefty. It is hefty. Need a little bit more bite. It can do wall of sound. I don't think it can do the super aggressive. I'm missing a little bit of a push. Um, but when you want size. what I'm doing right now. was to tons of amps. Realistically, would I record with this? Yes, I would. I have. You saw the track in the beginning and it works beautifully. Would I gig with this? I absolutely would. Um, I like locking tuners. If a string breaks, it's faster. But again, at this price point, if you want locking tuners, it's totally okay to ask the, the customer to upgrade yourself. I think the pickups are fine. If I want to metal, I would need a little bit more bite, a little bit more aggression. If I want size, if I want classic Rocky stuff, that's the shit. I think for cleans, there's a lot of stuff in there. So it might not be your 
your metal acts, but it's definitely your sludge rock, it's your punk rock, it's your grunge rock, and all the rock, rock, rocks out there, the classic rock. Um, I think it's a very, very recommendable guitar that doesn't have to hide in any way behind what other brands have to uh, offer, like Epiphone, for example. Of course, if you want the typical Gibson look, you're going to go for an Epiphone in this price range and not for a Hackstrom. If that's too old for you and you want something slightly different, then the Hackstrom is your bag of chips, especially with this look, which an Epi can't give you. Now, I know that Ibanez has some, have some guitars in the uh, single cut realm. Can't comment on these because I haven't played them, so I'm sorry. Um, who else offers stuff in this price range? I don't know. Chapman? It's not that. It's a different guitar. I think this is very highly recommendable. I, I, I absolutely love the finish. I love the playability. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this metal thing here, visually. It doesn't impair the playing in any way. And there's absolutely no reason not to like it, only that maybe it's because I'm not used to it, I don't know. But it's a Hackstrom thing. So this and this is defining the guitar, so shut up about it, Hing. So, thanks Hackstrom for sending this to me. This is a paid video, just to let you know. If you think I said what I say because of that, then you're an idiot. So please comment, go right ahead. Um, and I'm going to put links below because that is cool for you to, you know, buy and check it out. And if you click the link, that helps me. Please help me. Help me! Um, thanks, Leslie, for switching. Please don't fall asleep. We have two more to go. Um, yep. Yeah. And animals at the end.